about the same overlap we had before, about an inch and a half or two inches. Two inches is a real safe overlap. On a leading edge of a wing, we require a three inch overlap, and that's even over a, over a felt surface with no sewn seams required. Okay, we've got the glue on the leading edge now. We didn't wipe anything off because we're going to be gluing back into it. Recall on the other end, on the butt rib, we went ahead and finished glued. We're going to do the same thing on this opposite end. What we're looking for here, we brush that through the fabric is a nice uniform change of color. That shows that we've got full penetration to the surface that's underneath the fabric there. Again, we're going to leave that surplus of glue on there because we're going to be gluing into that. You notice I went ahead and brushed glue around the fabric that we tucked on the ends. I've done that on both ends. Now, while that glue's drying, we've got a couple areas here where we've got hinges. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and make sure the fabric is centered. We'll pull it up. We're going to take a mark here. And we'll go ahead and split the fabric here for the hinge. There's nothing real scientific about this. You can see I had, again, when we first started, I said any place you're going to want the fabric to attach, pre-glue it. That's got us pretty good pre-start here. Going to be just a little bit before the glue's dry, enough to lay the fabric into it. Okay, we've given a few minutes for the glue to tack up. That's why we cut our slots earlier. Just going to go ahead and hit this with the iron, just lightly. I'm not trying to shrink any fabric around, just tacking it into that glue. Down on this end, it's a little busier. We've got some areas here where the fabric's going to have to tuck. So I'm just going to go ahead, make a little cut across here. What I'm going to do is shoot for just about at that corner right there. Okay. Now we slide this off the end of the table. Go ahead and just kind of make our tuck here. Okay, we uh, went ahead and turned the aileron around here. Got the other end here yet that we can glue. So what we'll do is go ahead and cut this across. We can tuck our piece up here. Lightly tack it into place. Now, what you want to do, make sure that your fabric is not real loose. We've got a nice wrap all the way around here, which we do. We're just going to take our fabric and Lay it into this dried glue. As you can see as you go, you can pull the slack out of it. Get a nice lay on the fabric. Now, this is the finished edge of the fabric. There's a little bit of a ridge on here. And that's because of part of the looming process. Now there's two options. This is an area that's probably never going to show. So you got the option of just leaving this alone, we're going to be finished with the tape. Or you could take your pinking shears and pink along the edge here to get rid of that ridge. Because of the location of this, we're not going to do that, we're just going to elect to leave that be. Also, let's say your fabric was too long. What you could do in a time like that, works very well, is at this stage, you take your iron, and make a nice heat pass right along the nose here. Take some pressure, take some heat, because that leading edge there is really wicking the heat out of this iron. But if you do that, then you can take a pencil and you can mark your fabric wherever you want to cut it. Then you can peel it back and it's stuck fairly aggressively where we ran the iron. And then you've got your reference mark, you can take your shears, cut it off, once it's cut, go ahead and lay it back into here. Okay, we're doing our final glue now. 
One thing that's going to be different on this, you notice before when I glue it, I'd go ahead and just leave the glue. Now this is a finished area. Even though we're going to be taping over it later, what we're going to do is brush right down through this overlap seam. So a little around the edge, I went ahead and trimmed this tab that was sticking out, just tucked it around there and glued it. As you notice here, when this glue goes on, it wets that fabric and soaks through it very readily. Now, so we don't have a bunch of glue ridges and glue lines, the difference is that now we wipe the surplus glue off of our joint. We've done two things. We've picked up all the surplus that can make a mess, and secondly, we've helped force the glue down through the fabric. Clamp it in place with the iron. Tighten it up here a little bit with the iron. Again, we're going to wipe the glue off of this one now. Because this is our finished edge. Okay. Got a nailer on here. The fabric is now attached. As soon as that's dry, in about 15 minutes we can start going to the shrinking process and bring it up. So as you can see it's very simple, very easy to lay a fabric on a control panel, especially if you use a full wrap like this. Another thing that's kind of nice is we started with about that much glue in that little glue cup. We've still got glue in it, so it doesn't take a lot. We use probably about two ounces of glue. Okay, our glue's been drying now for just a few minutes. Got a old household steam iron here. Initial settings about 250 degrees. Now, what's a little different on this, we have a full wrap. Our glue seam is strictly on the leading edge and around the two butt ribs, there's nothing on the trailing edge. So what we want to do is be careful we don't do all of our shrinking, initial shrinking on one side and cause an uneven pull on the fabric. So what I like to do on that we start at our 250 degrees. This is really one of your important ironing steps here because we're doing the initial shrink of the fabric. Just doing the maximum amount of moving here. Now you notice I did the top side, bottom side. It doesn't matter as long as you go from side to side. We split that area between the center and the end. Again, we'll go side to side. We're causing this to develop a fairly uniform shrink around this area. We don't want to shrink our fabric all one direction. Again. Okay, we've got it pretty well initially shrunk. So now we can go to one side. We're still in our 250 degrees. I'm going to start right in the center. I'm going to catch around this leading edge area. That aluminum's pretty good heat sink. They have to work it a little bit to get the fabric to come up the tip. All right, and that's got the initial shrink, 250 degrees. So you have a very nice transition. All of our seams, all of our uh, edges are nice. We don't have any puckers or divots in it. The next step now will be to go to 300 degrees on the iron, and we'll go ahead and iron both sides at 300, at least twice. I like to do it two times. And then we'll go to 350 degrees and do our final ironing. And we'll do that a minimum of two times. And if you're not real sure of the stability of your iron, it doesn't hurt to even go three times. You want to try to give it a chance to get all of this up to 350 degrees to really stabilize it. Now the one exception to that is if this is a lightweight structure, uh, if it's an ultralight with 102 fabric, we'd probably stop at this shrink right here. Uh, if it's a lightweight uh, structures, some of them you'll have to stop at about 300 degrees depending on the strength of the structure. But most certified aircraft are capable of the full 350 degrees on the 102 fabric.